So here's an Arduino, and if you're not familiar with what an Arduino is, it's pretty much a development board. So you get to develop circuits using the microcontroller on board, and you can also build up shields. So this is the Ethernet shield I have on here. It has a micro SD port, which I find extremely useful for logging voltages. So if you want to test the efficiency of a solar panel, you can hook up the voltage measurement to your solar panel and have it log that data throughout the day. So that's what you can do with the Arduino, and it's quite awesome in that regard. But there have been cases where I see a great application for an Arduino, but I'd rather not spend $40 to make it. I'd rather spend $3 and get a chip. This is the AT Mega 8, made by Etmel, and Steve Spence has made a Instructables on how you can program a chip like this using your Arduino. So I'm going to put a link in and here's an image of his setup on a breadboard. So you can go that route using your Arduino, but seeing as I already have an AVR Dragon, I'm going to show you how I would program one of these. So here's the AVR Dragon. It's made by Etmel, the same people that make the microcontrollers for the Arduino. And it supports several types of programming. It has JTAG, ISP, and high voltage programming. Now not all the programming modes are supported on each microcontroller. For instance, the AT Mega 8 only supports ISP and high voltage programming. So I'm going to be programming with ISP and ISP stands for in-system programming so it allows you to program the microcontroller while it's in the circuit so if you made a mistake when you initially programmed it you can just program it without having to remove the microcontroller from the circuit that it's in now in order to connect the programmer to the microcontroller you need to look up the connection diagram and you can see that on the AVR Dragon PDF. Okay, so I've connected all the wires to the ISP and to VCC to give the microcontroller power, and it looks something like that. Now I'm not using the best wires, so I should keep the programming frequency pretty low so I don't have to worry about high frequency issues with bad wiring. So now it's time to connect this to the computer. Now in order to program with the AVR Dragon, you're going to need to download the Etmel Studio software. So go to etmel.com and go to Design Support and then go to Development Tools and Etmel Studio IDE and then select Etmel Studio 6.1 or whatever the most recent version is at this time and select the full version and click this to download and then enter your information and then the download will start and once you've installed the software once you've downloaded it go ahead and open the software and the first thing you want to do is go to tools device programming and you want to select your tool and that would be the AVR Dragon and then select the device that you want to program so that would be the AT Mega 8 in my case so click that and then click apply and set the frequency to 125 kilohertz and read your device information to make sure that everything's syncing up properly and indeed it is I can see the AT Mega I can see all the information about it I can check its memory what bits are locked what the fuse status is so the AVR Dragon and the AT Mega 8 are talking to one another so that's good now you can write a program so go to new project now you have a choice here you can either write in C or you can write in assembly 
it depends on what you're best at. So I'm going to write this in C just because that's probably what most of you are familiar with. And now you need to select your device again. So the program is properly selected for that device. All right, I was going to show you me programming, but that's rather unpleasant to watch. So, uh, first thing you want to do is define your CPU clock, and then you want to include the I/O folder so the program can identify what DDRB means and what port B means, and so on and so forth. And you also want to include the utility delay, so it knows what underscore delay underscore MS means and so that's what those are there for so after you've entered the main here uh, the first thing you need to do is define the direction of your register B so if they're all one like this that means that they're all outputs and then you want to declare the initial state of each port or each uh, bit within that register and uh, then you enter while so this is a loop here and the first thing I wanted to do was define an integer zeit1 and I made zeit1 equal to 1000 so that's 1000 milliseconds as a delay here and here it states that port B is off completely and here it states that it is on at the least significant bit and it both states there is a 1000 millisecond delay so let's see how that looks oh and to program this into your microcontroller all you need to do is go ahead and click that and it will load and everything looks good now let's look at what happened so I added the LED to B0, put a resistor in here and attached it to ground and now it is saying hello world. So you can do things far more complicated than that and my programming is still a little limited at this point so I'm not capable of making the most elaborate programs but I did make one a little more impressive than a blinking LED so I'll show you that as well. Okay, so here's my other circuit. Now something that I find really cool is you can run this entire microcontroller on a three volt battery. So obviously this isn't gonna last too long if you have a large power draw, but it does work for a short example. So I wrote two programs into the microcontroller and the first one I'll show you is similar to the one I showed you earlier. I have two LEDs blinking here so that's not that cool but I think this part is. Uh, if I turn this potentiometer here which is attached to analog zero it will increase the rate at which they blink. Now I can't go too high otherwise the camera can't see that they're blinking very well. Like I can see that blinking but yeah the camera doesn't pick it up. So that's cool. And the second program I wrote which I think is a little more impressive is a delay function. So if I press this switch here turns on the green LED, the red LED flashes a few times and then it turns off. And the potentiometer also controls the duration of how long the delay is. <clears throat> so 
So the next time you write a cool program on your Arduino, you can go out and purchase one of these at Melchips and follow Steve Spence's programming instructions so that you can program a standalone microcontroller or you can purchase the AVR Dragon. Now the AVR Dragon does cost $50, approximately the same price as the Arduino Mega, but I'd say it's worth buying because you can program a very large range of microcontrollers. You can program 8-bit or 32-bit Etmel microcontrollers and you can even program the microcontroller that is used in the Arduino Mega. Now clearly the Arduino has its advantages over trying to program one of these by itself because of all the shields that it has, as I stated before. So I'm not trashing Arduino. Arduino has some really, really cool stuff you can do with it and very useful. You can make your own web server and whatever else you need. So yeah, Arduino's awesome, but making your own standalone chip is going to be more cost effective for a simple program. So something to think about in the future for your next project. And yeah, well thanks for watching and I hope this was useful or insightful.